Hello everyone! This time, we are going to talk about research in daily life. The objective of this lesson is for you to be able to design research used in daily life. According to Faltado, Bombita, Buholano, and Pogoy, in 2016, research is an art of inquiry. It is the primary source of knowledge and it aims to develop new knowledge and apply scientific and engineering principles to connect the knowledge in one field to that in others. Research indeed is a structured inquiry that utilizes acceptable scientific methodology to solve problems and creates new knowledge that is generally acceptable. There are times na may mga questions tayong left unanswered. So, what we do is research. And by doing research, especially sa students tulad ninyo, you are confronting your own inquisitiveness of others. You are testing, validating if what you already know or what you believe is true. Now, ano ba yung sources of research topics or problems? Saan ba tayo nakakakuha ng idea about sa research paper na ating isusulat? First ay yung prevailing theories or philosophies. Pwede i-re-examine ang mga theories or philosophies na existing na or gamitin ito as framework sa iyong study. Another source of research topic or problems ay yung observations, intuitions, or a combination of both. Since research can be found in our daily life, big sabihin yung mga no-observe natin or ating mga ideas and thoughts, pwede rin itong panggalingan ng ating research problem. Another source is the different subjects taken and from them identify a problem that interests a student researcher the most. So, since nasa school naman ang setting ng research writing, very helpful yung mga problems sa mga identify natin sa kada subject and it varies. That is why it can be a good source of research problem. Another source can be sa different fields of interest or specializations. Also, sa existing problems sa classroom or school, which one may want to solve are also good sources of research problems. So, aside from the subjects, mga problems na na-identify per subject, pwede rin na yung mga problems classroom or school ay gawa ng research and eventually may program pa na makreate dahil dito. You may also observe outside kasi yung existing needs of the community or society pwede rin gawa ng research topic at research problem. Kung may problema na na-identify sa community, then study about it. Write an academic paper about it. Repetition or extension of investigations already conducted or maybe an offshoot of studies underway. So, pwedeng replicated study. May existing study na about it, but you would like to confirm, you would like to test the data if the data is Reliable. One good source ng research topics or problems ay related studies and literature. For example, required kayo na gumawa ng study about accounting or psychology in specific. So, magta-type lang kayo ng mga um, related sa subject matter na yun, sa course na yun. And makakakita na kayo ng mga studies and literatures about that field. Sa kanyo man na narrow down, ano ba yung specific topic na mas gusto mo pang i-explore? Another source is pwedeng manggaling sa advice of authorities or experts kung ang study mo ay may nagpa-fund from funding agencies. Pero syempre, kung walang funding na pinanggagalingan para may pagpatuloy mo yung iyong research, then advice of experts naman ang hihingin mo. Another source ay yung offshoots of friendly conversations. Kasi we are very comfortable when we are conversing with our friends. Doon lumalabas yung ating mga ideas, yung ating rants, and uh, from those rants, pwede tayo makakam up ng research problem. Lastly, incidental from interesting topics. May mga trends, so kailangan lang natin magbasa. Ano ba yung mga trending na research topics right now sa panahon? I also would like to share the criteria for selecting the research topic. 
Number one, it should be of researcher's interest and researcher must be with the topic. So, number one yun, kasi hindi mo matatapos ang isang research kung hindi ka curious sa magiging resulta nito. So, kung iisip kayo ng research problem or research topic, dapat lagi kayong excited. Ano yung magiging results ng aking study? Number two, it should be a modest one for a beginner to be carried on within a limited period. Meron lang kayong one semester for you to come up with a research paper. So, uh, dapat laging consider yung time frame. Number three, it should be clear and not ambiguous. Sa title pa lang dapat magino na ano yung gusto mong pag-aralan, ano yung limitations ng study mo ito. Number four, it should be specific and not general. Sa pagpili ng variables, dapat uh, specific na agad. For example, you would like to study intelligence, specify mo anong klase ng intelligence kasi maraming intelligence. It should also consider the training and personal qualifications of the researcher or researcher. So, as of now, kayo ay beginners pa lamang, pero still, try to come up with a quality paper. Number six, it should consider the availability of data involved in the study and the methods to be employed in gathering them. Once you were able to think na ng inyong research topic, uh, kasunod no, dapat in, in your mind, meron na kayong uh, data gathering, paano ba ang methods na ating gagamitin sa pag-analyze ng data. Number seven, it should consider the time factor involved in undertaking. Ngayon, so ikaw consider then how long are you going to do the data gathering and other activities. Number eight, it should consider the availability of effective instruments for gathering the data and their treatment. Kung hindi kayo gagawa ng sarili niyong instrument, ng survey, or ng interview questions, dapat humingi kayo ng permission mula sa mismong gumawa ng instrument na yun. And dapat, um, ito ay effective. Tinatarget nito yung gusto mong pag-aralan for your goal. And even yung treatment, it should always be available. Or else, hindi ka makapag-push through sa iyong experiment. Number nine, it should consider the financial capacity of the researcher to support the project. This one is for big researches, no, na nakakailangan ng maraming mga participants. But in your case, hindi nyo pa naman kailangan ng talagang finances to support your study. For your exercise, let us try to examine if the following statements are true or false. Number one, a friendly conversation can be a source of a research topic. Number one po ay true. Ito ay isa sa mga sources of research topics na napaggit kanina. Number two, preliminary research is crucial in identifying your research topic. This item is true. Number three, research is advantageous not only to students but to life as a whole. From the definition of the uh, word research, this item is also true. Number four, research can be done even informally. Okay? Ang sabi, ang research daw, it must be systematic. It is a structured inquiry. So, hindi pwedeng informal lang itong gawin. Number four is false. Number five, research requires no step-by-step -step procedure for as long as Results are obtained. Remember, research is objective and it follows steps. So, this item number 5 is false. Now, let us try answering evaluation. Are the following statements considered the research? Number 1. Mr. Santiago constructed a checklist for workshop equipment. Ito pong number 1 ay no. Hindi po siya isang research. Number two, Ms. Laag developed a learning module in computer troubleshooting. Since learning module lamang po, this item is not a research. Number three, Mrs. Morris prepared a training program for TVL teachers after a review of sample training materials available online. So, nag-base si Mrs. Morris sa mga existing na literature na nakita niya online. This item is, yes, a research paper. Number four, Mrs. Profeta experimented on the use of two 
teaching methodologies and determined their effectiveness and interpreted the results on the basis of a hypothesis. Yes, this is a research paper. Lastly, Mr. Velasco established the relationship between the school graduates' competencies and their skills requirements of the industry. Number five is yes, this is a research paper, specifically a correlational quantitative research. The next lesson is about writing a research title. So here, you are expected to come up with your own research title. And there are actually guidelines in writing the title according to Calderon and Gonzalez in 2019. First, the title is formulated before the start of the research work. It may be revised and refined later if necessary. So, ang una-una isusulat sa isang paper ay yung title muna. But of course, before coming up with the title, dapat nakapagbasa-basa ka na rin mga existing uh, studies and literatures. Then, all throughout the study, tanggapin na ang title ay magbabago, especially after the results are out. Number two, the title must contain the subject matter of the study, the local of the study, the population involved, and the period when the data were gathered or will be gathered. So, ito daw yung dapat nilalaman ng isang title, yung gusto mong pag-aaralan, kung saan yung pag-aaralan mo, at sino yung involved sa pag-aaral na yan, at kailan mo ginawa. Ngayon, hindi naman necessary na lahat yan ay present sa iyong title. Third, it must be broad enough to include all the aspects of the subject matter studied or to be studied. Hence, the title indicates what to be expected to be found inside the paper. That is why napakahalaga na na-identify yung subject matter studied or yung variable na pinag-aaralan. No, kasi dapat sinasaklaw nito lahat ng aspects ng variable na yon. It must be broad yet clear. Number four, it must be as brief and concise as possible. So, ang paper mo, sana hanggat maaari, dinidiscuss yung iba't ibang aspects, but at the same time, it is written straight to the point. Fifth, avoid using the terms an analysis of, a study of, an investigation of, and the like. All these things are understood to have been done when a research is conducted. So, kung title pa lang, iwas-iwasan natin gamitin itong mga terms na to sa simula ng ating title. Then, number six, if the title contains more than one line, it must be written like an inverted pyramid, all words in capital letters. Ito naman, in terms of format, pagkakasulat ng title, dapat inverted pyramid, so triangle na pababa. All words in capital letters. There are also characteristics of a good topic or a good title. First, a title should give readers information about the contents of the researcher and is preferable to one that is vague or general. Aside from a catchy one, syempre gusto natin interesting yung ating title para maraming babasa ng ating research. It should already give the readers information about the contents of your paper. Also, titles do not need to be stuffy or dull. But they should generally give readers some idea at the outset of what the research paper will contain. So, hindi naman kailangan na masyadong mahaba ang ating uh, research title. But at least malaman nung babasa ano ba yung pwedeng maging resulta ng iyong paper. Next, choose a title that is a phrase rather than a complete sentence. Also, as mentioned earlier, select a straightforward title over other kinds. Use no punctuation at the end of the title since hindi siya isang sentence. And do not underline the title of the research or enclose it in quotation marks. Ka all caps lang dapat. Let us once again identify if the statements are true or false. Number one, an existing problem in your classroom can be considered as a research problem. Ito yung sa topic kanina. Uh, this item is true. Number two, the research title must summarize the main idea of the study. Of course, this statement is true. Number three, the research title needs to be concise. This statement is true also. Number four, it is preferable to use acronym in the title. Number four is false. You may use acronym but at least on your title, isulat mo kung ano yung ibig sabihin ng acronym na yun. 
Number five, research title must be a complete sentence. No, it must be a phrase with no punctuation marks. That's all for this lesson. If you found this video helpful, then please like the video, subscribe to this channel, and ring the bell button. Thank you for watching!